Hello, grade five. This week we are reading expository text in the literature anthology textbook. This week's selection is called Global Warming, and our essential question is what changes in the environment affect living things? Thousands of years ago, large parts of landmass on Earth were covered by ice. Since then, Earth has been getting warmer. In recent decades, the rise in average temperature has been particularly rapid. Global warming is the term that has been used to describe these changes. Weather and climate are different. Weather is what happens every day. Climate is the average weather over a period of years. For example, it's possible that the weather on any day might be cool, but the average weather, the climate, is getting warmer. Why is the climate changing? Could Earth be getting warmer by itself? Are people doing things that make the climate warmer? What will be the impact of global warming? Can we do anything about it? Now remember, impact here is one of our vocabulary words, and impact is um, a synonym for the word effect. Okay, so again, what does global warming mean? Well, here we have paragraph clues that help us determine the meaning. Global warming describes the rise in Earth's average temperature in recent decades. Here we have the clues, Earth's been getting uh, warmer, rise in average uh, temperature, and also here we have the clue used to describe these changes. So this is how we know that global warming is um, a term that describes the rise in Earth's average temperature in recent decades. Notice how the last paragraph on page 385 um, here is, um, it's all questions, right? The author, um, the author here organized the introduction of the expository text with a series of question with a series of questions and this means that later on um, the author is going to give us the information that answers these questions throughout the text global warming is happening because of the greenhouse effect a greenhouse is a house made of glass the glass lets in sunlight but keeps warm air from escaping Earth is not a greenhouse, but certain gases in the atmosphere act like the glass in a greenhouse. Sunlight passes through Earth's atmosphere and warms the ground. Some of the heat bounces back into space, but much of it remains trapped near the ground by carbon dioxide, water vapor, and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The greenhouse effect helps make Earth warm enough for life to exist. But if greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere in larger amounts, much faster than before, then the warming will get much stronger and the climate will noticeably change. In 2007, a report by 2,500 scientists. In 2007, a report by 2,500 scientists from 130 countries concluded that humans are responsible for much of the current warming. No one person causes global warming, but there are billions of people on Earth. We cut down huge numbers of trees, drive hundreds of millions of cars and trucks, and burn vast amounts of coal and oil. All these activities contribute to a huge increase in greenhouse gases. Even if we decrease the amount of gases we now produce, it would not immediately stop the warming because the greenhouse gases stay in the atmosphere for years. The Earth's climate is very complex, and many factors play important roles. in determining how the climate changes. Natural variations in Earth's orbit around the sun change the amount of sunlight we receive and thus the temperature. Earth has had much warmer and much colder climates in the distant past. So here the Earth is, um, the Earth's uh, atmosphere is compared to a greenhouse. And how is it like a greenhouse? They both trap heat and uh, keep it from escaping, um, but the greenhouse traps heat with glass, Earth's atmosphere, traps heat and gases with water vapor. So as we, uh, as we read, we can pause from time to time in order to recheck our understanding. Um, of course, we ask ourselves, why can't we just stop global warming right away by cutting back on the amount of gas that we produce, right? But then we go back and reread. It says, decreasing the amount of gas we, we produce won't stop global warming right away because greenhouse gases remain in the atmosphere for a long time. All right, so this is why global warming has become such a problem. Most scientists agree that something different is happening now. While Earth's climate has always varied, it is now changing more rapidly than in any other time in recent centuries. 
since we have been keeping weather records, 19 of the 20 hottest years ever have happened since 1980. For thousands of years, the balance of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere had not changed much. But now we burn huge amounts of coal, oil, and natural gas to generate energy. Every year, billions of tons of carbon dioxide pour out from the exhaust of cars. Trains, trucks, airplanes, buses, and ships from the chimneys of factories. And from the chimneys of factories. There is 30% more carbon dioxide in the air than there was 150 years ago. Trees, like other green plants, convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. Okay, so why has the atmosphere changed? The atmosphere has changed, it says here, because we now burn large amounts of coal, oil, and natural gas. We heavily use um, various forms of transportation, and we cut down trees. So all of these activities lead to more carbon dioxide in the air. And again, this is why uh, the atmosphere has changed so much. All right, there's 30% more carbon dioxide in the air now than there was 150 years ago. But trees and forests are cut down in huge numbers. When wood burns or decays, even more carbon dioxide is released. Carbon dioxide enters into the atmosphere much faster than the remaining forests and oceans can absorb it. The release of other greenhouse gases adds to the speed at which the world's climate is changing. Methane is released by millions and millions of cattle and other farm animals. Nitrous oxide comes from chemi chemicals used in soil fertilizers, as well as from automobiles. The Arctic is already showing the effects of global warming. Average temperatures in the northern regions of, Canada, of Alaska, Canada, and Russia have risen twice as fast as in the rest of the world. The Ward Hunt Ice Shelf, the largest single sheet of ice in the Arctic, started to crack in 2000. By 2002, it had split. Now it is breaking into smaller pieces. The Arctic Ocean is a great body of sea ice that covers the North Pole. Satellite photographs show that the ice pack has been shrinking and thinning in depth since the early 1900s. Scientists say that for the first time in human history, ice may disappear from the Arctic Ocean every summer. So here the text is giving us facts and information about real places, right? There are dates that tell when things uh, happened and we have photographs to support the text and to help the readers visualize all of this information. So it's a lot of information that we are taking in at once. And this is why we also have photos to make it easy for us to visualize. Now, all of these are the um, features of expository text. Global warming has also changed the feeding patterns and behaviors of polar bears, walruses, seals, and whales. It may even impact their survival. Polar bears live only in the Arctic. They are, com they are completely dependent on the sea ice for all their life needs. In the winter, females give birth to cubs. The mother polar bear eats little or no food during the winter. As spring approaches, the bear family makes a run onto the sea ice to feed on seals, their main source of food. If the ice melts, their food supply will be cut off and this will impact their survival. Glaciers and mountain snow covers are rapidly melting. Almost every glacier in Alaska is receding. A few decades ago, huge rivers of ice stretched over the land. Now hundreds of feet or sometimes miles of bare rock and soil are exposed. In 1963, the Minden Hall Glacier Visitor Center in Genoa, Genoa opened very close to the glacier. Today, it is a mile or, or more away from the frozen edge of the retreating glacier. In the 1850s, there were 150 glaciers in Montana. By 1968, there were 37. In 2008, there were fewer than 24. Glaciers that have lasted for thousands of years may be gone in two decades. The icy covering on tall mountain peaks are also disappearing. Each year, there is less snow remaining on the mountains during the summer. The snow melts earlier by a week or more in the spring, and snow falls later by a week or more in autumn. So here in the text, the uh, author is giving us uh, information using uh, clues, right? This is how we, um, here it's giving us information in sequence. In the winter, as spring approaches, 
a few dec a few decades ago, now in 1963, today in the 1850s. So here, um, the author is using sequence sequence to uh, help organize all of this information for us. The author also uses cause and effect here, and by using cause and effect and uh, sequence to uh, help us understand, the author is showing all of the changes that have occurred over time in Alaska and uh, Montana. So this is the effect, and he is um, also um, telling us why these changes have occurred. So this is the cause. So based on the information that we read about the glaciers in, Mo in Montana, we can infer that um, the temperature change in Montana since 1850 has probably risen, right? Because so many glaciers have disappeared. Um, glaciers are, um, as, you, as you guys know, and as we discussed in class, glaciers are huge rivers of, of ice and the warmer temperatures are melting this ice. Look at the photos on page 391. Um, in the photo on the right, we see more rock exposed uh, because so much ice has melted. So the author included these, these photographs to help the readers visualize the changes to the glacier that he described in the text on the page before. <laughs> 